Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another case study uh, regarding just a time mastery program. Uh, my name is Tushar Imdad and with me today I'm delighted to introduce uh, Sister Motia who is, um, she's got so many roles um, um, I'm going to ask her to clarify but um, she's a doctor, she's a uh, mother, she is a homeschooler, she is a writer, mashallah and um, uh, I'm delighted to have her here. Assalamu alaikum and welcome Sister Motia. Thank you so much for having me. No problem at all. So, Sister Matia, first of all, um, just to get the context, um, please tell us uh, uh, about uh, you know where you live because you're, you're you know you're not from the UK or the US. You're living in in the Middle East, and what your your, your job is, and what was your situation before you joined Vista? Uh, okay, so I'm a Nigerian, uh, currently living in Saudi Arabia. I've been here for over a decade. I am an obstetrician gynecologist as well as a homeschooling mom of three kids. Wow. I also write, um, I'm an author, a writer and author um, of contemporary Islamic fiction, mostly. Um, before I joined Vista, I was kind of like, um, so because my writing took off really internationally about a year ago. So mm -hmm. I was spinning around, so to speak. I was trying to, you know, keep, abreast of all of my roles in terms of being able to do everything because all, each of them have so much demand on me and it, it felt like I wasn't doing any one of them right. Mm. Like if I was at work, I was thinking of my kids. If I was with the kids, I was thinking this time I should be writing. Yeah. If I was writing, I was thinking this time I should be spending you know, with my kids for quality time. So I was just really driving my, myself crazy. So yeah, that was where I was before I joined this stuff. Fantastic, right? And, and you know what, what's interesting about your case is there's there's three at least three things, three obstacles you could say in your background, which would normally prevent someone like you um, even considering coaching, right? One of them is you know being an Eastern sister, someone living in the East from Saudi or from Nigerian background. Uh, number two. Uh, being a doctor i'll be honest with you i i've i've um i rarely get people from the medical profession right um i don't know whether it's they're too busy or whether um it's uh it, they think they're too educated to get help and it's a it's a bit of a block i'm not sure so um just on those two points you know being someone from the east and also being a doctor um were they blocks you had to overcome um uh, or, or, or how were you able to overcome those stereotypes that you know sisters from the east don't get coaching or you know doctors are too busy and doctors are too intelligent to need coaching so how did you overcome those blocks um okay so they were definitely blocks for me and that I, I think that being from the east most of our problem is at least for me personally it was the financial commitment because mm. when you say a certain amount of money in the uk currency the people who are in the uk i mean it's just fine for them but by the time i consider the um, exchange rate factor that invests a lot of money. So it becomes a case of, am I really going to invest that amount of money in this program? That's mm. number one. Mm. And then being a doctor, we, we, we haven't, the way we've been trained has been so linear. So as, as educated as we are, yeah. we're specifically educated in a certain field. And even though I am personally a student of um, Islamic psychology, so I'm a little bit more open to um, ideas of coaching and stuff, mm -hmm. I, I still had to overcome the idea that I might need help in that circumstance. Mm -hmm. So my sister, my sister was the one who got me onto the idea of coaching. And she was like, you know, I think what you need is a life coach to help you figure out all of these things. And I had been looking, I'd been looking for a while, almost six months. I reached out to a couple of sisters, mm -hmm. had a couple of coaching sessions, but we always agreed that, mm, no, this is not the best for me. Mm -hmm. And then I saw your post. I saw your post on Sister Samaira and I was like, oh my God, she is just like me. She has all of these, you know, I mean, she was younger and her kids, she had a few fewer kids and her kids were smaller, but across boards, we, we had similar circumstances. So I was like, okay, let me reach out to this person. Maybe so this would you say the key thing was knowing that Vista or my services are to help people who are very busy with multiple roles to kind of organize their time? What was the kind of key factor to kind of get you over that threshold? I think for me, what was the key role was the fact that your, your outcome was very specific. It wasn't a, I'm a life coach. I'm going to help you build your mindset kind of thing. It was, I am going to help you manage your time to be the best version of, you know, to get the best out of your time and the best version of your productivity. It was very clear cut, which is what I was looking for. 
I didn't think that I had an attitude problem, which I eventually found out that I did. And I didn't think that I had a clarity problem, which I found out that I did. Mm. I just thought I had a problem with managing my time. Mm. And that idea of, okay, maybe he can figure out my time. Let me, let me see what he has to offer. Mm. I will admit that I was very skeptical at the beginning, but alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm glad you, I'm glad you made the, uh, the risk. And, and you know, the interesting thing you said is that people in the West, it's easy for them. They have the money. It, actually, it's not, it's not quite like that, right? Actually, the, you find the people who might have less resources, but they have more determination, they're actually uh, more likely to, to, to kind of get into this process. And so you're, you're, you know, you're another great example of someone who had the courage to pursue you know, your dreams and to pursue your goals and have that tenacity and determination that if the right solution's there, you're going to take it. You know, so well done for that. And now let's talk about that. Let's talk about your, you know, your journey. And so um, you've mentioned in, in passing, there's a few, you know, like you thought it was going to be just about time management, but it actually helped to you clarity and other things. So uh, which, you know, if you had to name, let's say three um, of the, the many different systems or different th skills you learned in Vista, what would you say the three most helpful tools or systems or strategies you, you took out of the Vista program? Okay. Um, so I think that the first, and for me, the most monumental was, it wasn't even one of the skills I eventually ended up learning. It was just the first coaching call with you oh. and helping me to the whole visualization ex exercise. So we were talking about the personal mission statement mm. and you, you, I don't think you noticed or you realized it, but at the end of that call, you had made me realize that I was so focused on what I didn't want. I didn't want to be this tired anymore. I didn't want to be this overwhelmed. I didn't want to be spinning on it, but I wasn't thinking of what I did want. Mm, I do so remember at the that. End of, yeah. yeah. Yes. So at the end of that call, you made me realize that and you made me go back to sit down and say, okay, write your best possible life. Mm. What does it look like? And I wrote like three pages of journal entry. Wow. <laughs> but you, you had a lot of experience. Remember, because I remember we were talking about what, should you go to the UK or should you take this course? Yeah. And, and you know, you, 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 in, in a way, and you've had to come back to your same job. So, in many ways, you're, this is a good example. And I think this is really good for listeners in here. You might be in a situation like you are. Unfortunately, your outward circumstances aren't that different in terms of like, you got the same job as you had before, you're in the same country, right? And maybe these aren't maybe the ideal place for you, um, but your mindset has shifted. Like you said, you're exactly. now looking forward instead of back. So what, what would be exactly. the message to like maybe listeners here who might think, well, you know, my circumstances aren't gonna change. It's too hard. I'm stuck in this country. I'm stuck in this job. I can't leave this job. I want to, maybe my dream is to be a entrepreneur. Maybe my dream is to leave this country. Maybe my dream is to kind of, you know, whatever their dreams are, it might feel like it's too far away and there's nothing practical. What, 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 what helped you, like, even though you're in the same circumstance outwardly, but you feel so much freer inwardly. What do you, say, what do you think the key is to that? And it's kind of give a, a bit of um, hope for maybe listeners in that situation. I, th I think the key for me was just what I was describing, being able to visualize what mm. I wanted as opposed mm. to being fixed on what I didn't want or where I was right now. And so once I was able to visualize that, then I was able to ask myself, which is the second thing, the, the focused goal setting. I was right. able to ask myself, how do I get there? Okay, so yeah. this is where I am. That is where I want to be. How do I get there? Yeah. And then I was able to outline the steps for what I need to get there and then break them down into, you know, manageable rules over the yes. next quarter, over the next year. And, yeah. you know, it, it is, subhanAllah, I, yeah. I cannot believe how much that has really helped me. Yeah. So and it is if, what, if what we, we want to make those dreams a reality and make it concrete. Exactly. And, and, and so you're not just thinking about it. Or talking you're not just about thinking it. so much about being stuck here as much as, you know, you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. And you have a very clear path of how to get there. You have the goals for what to do to get there. Yeah. And all of them are specific and measurable and attainable. And you, you've you know, broken them down into time-bound portions and you're just working on them. And each, every step you take and the closer you get to it, you, you're so, it's so empowering to have it. Well done. I mean, you, you had it. I mean, I must admit, you had a difficult state. And I remember it could have gone, it could have gone the other way. You could have given up. You could have stayed negative. But... Congratulations yeah, yeah, yeah. to you in, in actually taking the action and, and being coachable. And this is why before we take anyone on, we ask, you know, you've got to be willing to listen to the advice and, 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 and listen to the coach. And you did that. And Alhamdulillah, you know, you've got the results. I mean, I must, I must also say Jazakallah, Khairan, to you, because I know I was a very 
skeptical <laughs> clients at the beginning. Yeah. But you, you know, you, you, you were patient with me and you let me get there on my own, you know, of course, with guidance from you. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. No, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, so let's talk about some of those achievements because I know, you know, um, I've, I read a bit from your success tracker, mashallah, you've actually uh, achieved some milestones. So do you want to share some of your, you know, your best achievements uh, since coming on Vista? Um, so I think that apart from having the clarity, uh, it was being able to focus on the particular um, goals that I wanted. So um, how do I say that? Now that I have specific goals in mind and every day I have my to-do list, my notebook movements, I could just work with that, mm. know that I'm working towards my goal. I've achieved my goal for the day and then I don't feel guilty, which is a big step for me. I don't feel guilty about, about whatever else I do for the rest of the day so I can take more time with my kids, I can spend time just reading for leisure, all of those things that I was not able to do before. And then the deep work, specifically, the deep work blocks really helped me because before I joined this, I was having so much problems, you know, trying to find time to write. Yeah. But being for now, I've been practicing deep work um, blocks and it's really been helpful to me, mashallah, alhamdulillah. You, you did, didn't something, you didn't get some award in your writing or something? Oh yeah, my book, my book won the Daybreak Press Award for Best Muslim um, Islamic Fiction. Wow. Actually, I won two of them during the course of this stuff. Wow, my bro, yeah, you, know, uh, you, uh, you know, once this is on uh, YouTube, please feel free to drop a link to to your books and. Uh, okay, I'm okay, happy for you yeah. to promote it under this video, inshallah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So um, that is great. And and then what about your um, family? Like, like you know, like one of the things we like to say in Vista is that. We, we, we help you achieve your goals without sacrificing your dean or without sacrificing your family life. So, um, uh, you know, most of your achievements and accomplishments you've described as a writer, but I know that you still maintained your sanity as a mother, right? And as a homeschooling mother as well. So do you want to just mention like how um, you are able to maintain your balance um, with uh, your other roles? I think that for the homeschooling part, what really helped me was, you know, the focus goal setting. So once I realized that I was going, I had to like carry on all of these rules, it was easy to time block specific times for homeschooling, which I never used to do before. Before it was just homeschooling used to be, okay, so I'm free today. I don't have to be at work or, yeah. you know, whatever. And then we just move with it. And we didn't have specific um, timelines or curriculum or plans. But now I, I, at the beginning of this homeschooling year, which we started in September, I kind of like made a curriculum, a schedule which is still flexible, but at least we have goals of what we are doing. And then we time block for it. So from this mashallah. time to this time, everybody's sitting. You sound, you sound organized. You kids. sound, mashallah. That's great. But subhanAllah, I didn't used to be. I didn't used to be. I used to always think that I was just, um, I was a pan star. So I just take the, each day as a, you know, as a cause. Mm. And I, to a large extent, I'm still that way, but I have, while I don't structure every minute, I have specific goals that I have to achieve yeah. and I work towards those goals. So that makes me feel like I have done so much more with my day, even though I'm spending less time doing those things. So that's it. That's the really secret of time management, right? You're doing less, but you're achieving more. Alhamdulillah. Oh, alhamdulillah. Fantastic. It's been such a it's been so great having you. Just final question before before we leave. Um, is um, you know, people listening to this. Uh, maybe they're being from the eastern countries like yourself maybe they're not maybe they're from uh, the us or the uk but they all have that same fear that same fear of investing them maybe this is the first time they've ever invested themselves in something like this and they're you know they're not used to it they're used to investing in holidays or in cars or umrah or something else but they've never invested in themselves on a, and even though they know that this program could transform their lives there's a lot of resistance and fear. What would be your advice to them, uh, maybe who are listening to this and that's their worry there, they've got this fear in investing in themselves and, and this fear of whether it's gonna work for them. What, what would you say to them? I would say, if you are considering it, then you probably need it. Because if everything was working for you, you wouldn't even be considering this for at all. The, the fact that you're here thinking, who should I? Probably, it's probably because you do need it. And, well, I mean, I would not say I guarantee it, but I would say that it is worth it. It is worth, you know, just being, even if all you do is get out of your own head to be able to see what you're doing 
you know, not necessarily wrong, but not in the best way, just to help you reorganize. Like, I don't have extra roles that I've added to my life. I don't have extra things that I do. I just have a clearer vision, a more focused attention, and a mind shift. And it has been amazing. So I think that if you're here and you're considering it, then you should probably, you know, do it and allow, inshallah, put back in it for you. Wow, that's a great, uh, that's a great message to end. So Sister Mati, I'm, I'm really, really uh, pleased to see your progress and uh, I can't wait to see your future books. I'm going to get them for, for my own children and um, uh, really uh, we're rooting for you and we pray that uh, you, you know, stay in the Vista community and you can, uh, you know, help the students coming on as well, inshallah. And uh, inshallah. Uh, we pray for your continued barakah and tawfiq in your time and in your family. And uh, Jazakallah for your time and thank you for uh, sharing your, your experiences and your wisdom uh, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, benefit of the listeners um, out there. And um, inshallah, um, uh, we, 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 you know, have a, have a great end of year and, um, and, and we'll, we'll be keeping in touch, inshallah. Inshallah, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.